I have been on a fishing frenzy the last few days. Tempera solos, barb fishing, heck I even tried three tick fishing for a little bit if you could believe that. Because for some reason using a knife and a log magically makes you fish faster. Science I guess. What's your go-to fishing method? Temperos, barbarian fishing or something else? Let me know in the comments below. Of course I've been up to other bits and pieces as well, a lot of questing as usual. So before we jump into today's episode, quick recap on what we did last time. We knocked out 50 thieving in preparation for getting the rogues outfit, knocked out a handful of quests, got our first 99 cape from the fire making we did a few episodes back, and also quickly knocked out the 10th anniversary event for OSRS before jumping into some Temperos to leave off the episode. As I mentioned in the last episode, I found Temporos to be really fun, like it's a lot better than Winter Todd, and yeah, I think it's a great fishing method, especially for Iron Man just to gather some additional resources. So I did quite a lot of it. I started out doing some mass worlds initially just to get the early levels up before moving to solos, and solos are definitely a lot, lot better to do. You can trick Temporos into not attacking you after the first rotation of tidal waves and storms, so you pretty much end up just fishing and cooking AFK for a good 5 or 6 minutes or so. I'll give a quick rundown of the method that I used here. Basically I would just start fishing until I had 8 fish and then start cooking until the double spawn appeared. Once the double spawn appeared, just fished until it disappeared. Cooked myself up 16 fish and went and shot them at Temporos. So this is what gets Temporos to stop attacking because he goes down to 10% energy and so we'll never use a special attack again. Then pretty much just rinse and repeat from here, just went back to fishing a full inventory, cooking it up, shooting it at Temporos, attacking the whirlpool, and then yeah, it's just fish a whole inventory, cook and shoot again another two times until the round is over. It's it's really easy, really chill, it makes it easy to grind out all the combat achievements as well, which you'll see in a second. That's just a really brief overview of how I did it. I did release a separate, more in-depth guide if you just want a bit more discussion or to see how I did it um, step by step, then you can click the video on screen in the info card to go check that guide out after you finish watching this video, of course. So, Master of Buckets, that's our first combat achievement down for Temporos. And two more combat achievements down, Why Cook and Lone Angler, that's three of them. I've actually got four of them done, I must have missed recording the um, Calm Before the Storm one, but yeah, making progress. Watch out a cold one, coming for that title, in my dreams. These solos are so cruisy I just completely missed hitting 550 total level, which is pretty awesome, so there's another milestone for the account. We are the champions, my friend. In case you're wondering, the fishing spots and the green highlight for the double spawn is normally part of the base rune light client. And then there's also this extra Temporos plugin you can download from the plugin hub, which just has a bunch of the other timers and that. I've mostly been using the idle notifier and the timers for the fires and the fishing spot. That way I can set up the rune light notifications and my screen will flash red whenever the double spawn appears, which just makes it easier when you're semi AFK and not really looking at the screen to not miss the double spawns. 50 fishing down, this is so so chill, it just sneaks up on you, the time is flying. That's 30 cooking as well, the cooking levels are starting to add up bit by bit. And 60 fishing, that's a nice round jumping off point I think, so let's go do something else for a little bit. From one fishing boat to another, that's right, it's time for some trawler. I told you I was on a fishing frenzy this week. It's actually pretty handy these days how you don't have to have swamp paste and repair downstairs. You can just fight the Kraken upstairs and repair the railing to get your contribution, which makes it a lot easier for early Iron Man not having to collect all those resources. And first game down, how is our RNG today? Nothing. Well, on to the next. Round two, three, four. This is not looking good. Hey, there we go. Round five, our first piece of angler outfit, the pants. I felt like I was going dry again, so I stopped recording, and here we go. Number 11, and we got the second piece, angler hat. I wish fishing trawler would track the kill count in game for you, but at least rune lights does it for our loot. Hey, our luck's turning around, that's the third piece. The way we started, I thought this was going to take a while, but we're well ahead of the rates now. Fingers crossed for the last bit. Hell yeah, we didn't jinx it. We actually got the last two pieces back to back. That's the 15th attempt. This is not one of the hardest grinds in the game, but each piece is 1 in 12, so typically you'd expect around 50 games, and each game is a good 5 minutes or so. So it can add up time-wise quite a bit, but we got really lucky here to knock that grind out. That's two skilling outfits now, actually we got the Pyromancer really quick as well, so yeah, that's awesome, we can keep moving on. Before we do leave, we're actually going to quickly take the rusty sword that we got from the junk during Fishing Trawler to hand that in for the Ardoin Diary. We also got some buttons, fortunately, which can be polished up for animal magnetism. We were actually knocking out the uh, fishing outfits so quickly we almost didn't get enough junk items, but we got everything we needed in the end. Also, while we're in the area, we're just going to quickly grab a couple of swamp paste, a spare hammer, and some tinder boxes from the general store, and then we're going to head over to Edgeville with the Clan Wars teleport. 
Just occurred to me as well that the Angler outfit is our first little green collection log. You know, it's not a crazy one or anything, but it's still nice to have the first one done on the account. I don't think I've actually showed this little tip before, which is quite helpful when you don't have many teleports early on. When I say clan wars to Edgefield, I mean you go to the Ferox Enclave with clan wars, then you can actually go downstairs into the Soul Wars teleport, and then just exit the Soul Wars again, but pick Edgefield, and then yeah, there, now you're in Edgefield. Once we're in Edgefield, we're just going to quickly chat to Marley for Below Ice Mountain, which we started previously, cut up some sapphires, and make ourselves a sapphire necklace and also a silver sickle while we're here at the furnace. Then we're going to pull the lever and head into the wilderness to go over to the Mage Arena. So the Mage Arena rune shop is actually one of the most useful rune shops in the game for an early Iron Man. It's probably the easiest way to grab some early lore and cosmic runes because there's no requirement unlike other activities such as runecrafting or other shops like the Profitinus shop or the Magic Guild shop. So we're going to hop around and grab ourselves 200 cosmic runes and then also enchant that sapphire necklace we just made. So now we have a games necklace, gives us a teleport to Barbarian Outpost which is handy because it has a bank and we will do that right now. Talk to the tutorial guy for Barbarian Assault so that we can unlock the minigame teleport. And also we're going to start up Alpha Grimhand's Bar Crawl while we're here. Then we're going to head down south, start up the Waterfall quest, and just progress it to the point where we need to collect Glarial's Pebble. Then we'll just quickly pop by Rosolo while we're here and grab a Green Man's Ale, which we need for Recipe for Disaster in the future. Then head over and start up Dwarf Cannon to the part where we need to go find Lolk, which is down near the Fishing Guild. But alas, Mr. Lolk has to wait. It's time to minigame teleport over to Fishing Trawler for good old Fight Arena. We're going to use Fire Strike to knock out Fight Arena. And when we're in the area, we also want to do Tree Gnome Village. So just going to grab all the items that we need for that. Again, we'll be using Fire Strike there too. Astute observers will notice I have no logs in my inventory, but you need those for Tree Gnome Village. So make sure you bring six logs with you. And yes, it's time for another episode of Safe Spots with JB. But at least this one is so simple that even I can't mess it up. Fight Arena done. Beautiful. We finally have some melee combat stats. Runelight is just so busted. Look at this. It just shows you the entire way through the maze. But anyway, this is just another one of those little multi-questing shortcuts you can do. As you know, we had just started Waterfall Quest and you need to get the Glarial's Pebble while you're down here in the maze. So while we're here, we're going to pop in, grab the Pebble, and then head back up and just continue on with starting Tree Gnome Village. You may notice a few spare pebbles in my inventory. You can just get that by doing the drop trick. So you just drop the pebble, talk to the guy again, and he'll give you another one. Always get a few spares, it never hurts, just in case you die. So if you're an absolute goose like me, this is where you do the walk of shame back to Port Kazar to withdraw the six logs you should have brought in the first place. Another safe spotting challenge. Again, <laughs> luckily this one went okay. And Tree Gnome Village complete. Another quest down. And let's just put that to use straight away. Take the spirit tree up to Gnome Stronghold. So we've got a bunch of shopping to do here. So I'll put a list on screen to make it easier to keep track of. What we need is some dwell berries, two buckets of milk, two chocolate dust, one pineapple, 10 potatoes, three pots of flour, four cheese, one orange, one gnome spice. So that's all the core items that we use for questing here and there. Then we also need another 130 chocolate dust on top of 120 produce items. So produce items can be anything like onion, potato, cabbage, tomato, so on. Basically, these are just items that can be used to make regular compost. So we're going to stockpile a few for use in the future. Once we've done all our shopping, we're just going to swing by Blueberry's bar as well to sign him off for the bar crawl, as well as buying a pre-made Blueberry special from his shop. And then also pop downstairs and grab two swamp toad legs from the swamp just outside the tree. So with our shopping chores out of the way, it's back to questing. We can just minigame teleport over to Barbarian Outpost again, grab ourselves our rope, Glarial's pebble, and then a bunch of food, and then progress Waterfall Quest to grab the Glarial's amulet and urn from the little cave downstairs with all the moss giants. Praying to the gods that the moss giants don't knock you out. Although now that you have a bit of health from Witch's House, we should be okay. And now we can pretty much wrap up Waterfall Quest. So I just quickly ran back up to Barbarian Outpost to grab the rest of the items you need to finish it off, all the earth runes and whatnot. And also grab the Fire Strike runes, because while we're here, we're going to kill a fire giant for the diary. And quest complete. That's our second melee combat above level 1 now, 30 strength. And that's the fire giant killed for the diary. I have no idea what this combat task was. I wasn't expecting that, but we'll take it. We also got 24 mage while we were killing the fire giant. And now I think that's enough questing for the episode. Let's get back to some skilling. A bit more fishing time, I think. Just got to speak to our barbarian brother, Mr. Otto, so that we can do some heavy rod fishing. Well, I'm well and truly settling into the fishing grind for the day. You can see I'm even getting the hang of the three tick method. I don't usually tick manipulate, but it's not too bad, actually. I won't go into a full guide. I think there's, there's plenty of excellent guides on YouTube already on how to do three tick, but just the general gist of it for those who are unaware. 
Normally fishing takes five ticks in game, which is 0.6 seconds per tick. Every five ticks, you will have a chance to catch a fish. By using the knife and the log in this method, which is a three tick action, you're tricking the game into thinking you're fishing every three ticks. So you're effectively almost doubling your experience rates, which makes a huge, huge difference. Tempros is excellent for a more chill method that gives you a whole bunch of loot that you can use elsewhere in the game to advance other skills. Whereas Barbarian Fishing gives you early agility and strength XP without having to run around with no stamina potions and without having low damage to train up your strength. So it's incredibly useful in that regard as well. So the reality is I don't think there is a best method per se. Are you early game and you want to advance your strength and agility? Or do you want to build up some resources and cash doing Temporos? I think there's no wrong answer and reality is you're going to do both in the long run anyway. And on that note, I'm going to fish the day away. Feel free to check out the previous episode on screen now and subscribe if you enjoyed and want to tune into the series. Have a good one guys. See ya.